true story because I was there. As you all know, I was, I was up north this week in New Jersey and I had to come home today. Well, I made it to the airport all right, but it was after that that things started changing on me. First of all, I walk up to the counter. This woman, she takes my ticket. She says, any bags? I said, yes, ma'am, I've got, I've got two, but I'm not gonna give them to y'all because y'all break them. And then she gave me my ticket back. She says, Mr. Shelito. I said, no, no, the name's Shelito. She says, your seat number's 13C. I said, yes, ma'am, I rightly know that I can read. Well, I take my bags, take my ticket. She tells me to go to gate 40 and I go down there. Well, I make it all right because I'm three hours there. I, I like to be on time, you know. I, uh, I got there, waited for the plane, and there wasn't no plane. I didn't know what was going to happen. But here comes a plane, all these people get off this plane. And they all look kind of white looking, so I start worrying right then and there. Close to the starting time, they, they call out the first number of people and they say, anybody with children or anyone needing help getting on this plane to come on first. And I ain't flown that much and I knew I had to get on first because I was going to have to have some help. And I wanted to make sure I was in there in plenty of time to leave. Because I knew if I waited to the last minute, I wouldn't get on that plane. Well, I take my ticket up to this woman and she says, may I have your boarding pass? I says, yes, ma'am. And she takes this boarding pass and rips it in two and gives me this little stub back. And she know what she says? She says, Mr. Shalito. I said, no, ma'am. My name is Shalito. She says, your seat number's 13C. I said, yes, ma'am. I read that when I first bought the ticket. Woman up there in the front said, yeah, your seat's 13C. Or 16C, excuse me. It ain't changed yet, so I'm okay. Well, I go in and get on this plane I see all them seats in there, and I sit down. And oh, about 20 minutes later, there still ain't many people on this plane. I said, something's wrong. I said, Delta, Delta. I asked this, this woman to come walking up. I said, ain't y'all the people that had to crash in Dallas about three years ago? Yeah, this is the same flight. Well, I start sweating a little bit. Well, about 15 minutes later, this guy comes on. And I see up there in this little bitty cabin. I didn't tell you when I got on. They said, you'll have to go to the right. Well, I knew that because I looked in this this place up there, and these three men sitting in the only three seats that was in there. So I, that's the only way I could go. I put my stuff up. I sat down. <clears throat> we started getting ready, and I heard this awful sound. You, you can't imagine what I heard. I said, what was that? She said, well, we just turned on the engines. I said, the engines? Engines don't sound like it. Said, these do. I said, well, I think they need a tune-up. She said, no, they're all right. They'll be okay. I said, well, if you say so. Well, about 10 minutes later, they said they're going to close the doors, and I know I can't get off then, so this stewardess, as we start to push this plane back, this stewardess is talk talking. She says, this is your seat belt. I said, yeah, I know. That's my seat belt. And she says, you need to put it on. I said, what for? I ain't gonna get out when I'm up that high. He says, I know it's for safety. He says, okay, I'll put it on. About 20 seconds later, she starts talking about pulling this, in an emergency, if this little cup falls down, you put it on your face. I said, we gotta do that. We're gonna do it now. We gotta do it when we have the emergency. She says, no, we're not gonna have an emergency, but just in case we do. I said, okay. Well, we, she tells us about that, and then she says, this little card under your seat says something about life preserver. And I said, what's that for? She says, well, if we don't come down on ground, we could come down on water, and you're going to need it. Well, I says to myself, I said, if we come down, we probably ain't going to need the seat belt, probably ain't going to need no mask, and we're probably sure ain't going to need no flotation because there ain't going to be nothing left of any of us. Well. We take off and this old plane starts taking off. 
takes off, and I thought he's going to go straight, but he just starts turning to the right, and everybody's leaning to the right, and this plane's going to the left, and we're leaning to the right, but it finally takes off and goes to the right the way we were leaning back towards Dallas because we was heading back out over the ocean. And we get started, and I didn't tell you about this. This little boy was crying when he got on. He was a little black boy. I was crying, but I, I wasn't letting it show, but I, I was worried. I, I'd never been this worried in my entire life because this plane, the, the roar and the seats, and ain't nobody on this plane. So we get going, and this woman comes up. She says, you can take your seatbelt off now. And I said, no, ma'am. I'm not going to take it off. I'm going to leave it on. I want them to find me with the seat when we land or when we crash or have an emergency. Well, about 20 minutes later, they come down this aisle pushing this little cart, and she says, what do you want? I said, she says, do you want anything? I said, no, ma'am. I'm married. I, I'm, I've been married 20 years. I don't want anything. She said, no, no, I don't mean that. She says, do you want anything to drink? I said, yeah, yeah. And she says, what do you want to drink? And I said, well, you got an old cold Lone Star. Said, no, we ain't got no Lone Star. I said, well, what have you got to drink? She said, well, we got soda pop. Well, I'll take a soda pop. She said, what kind? I said, give me one in case something happens and if I wet my britches, it won't show. No. So she gives me an old Sprite and I, I, I take this Sprite. Ten minutes later, they come down this aisle, push this little cart again. This little old cart. She says, you want something to eat? And I said, yeah, I might as well. It might be my last meal. But she gives me this little old meal, and it's good meal. I wasn't sure what it was. But it had this soup on it, and it was, it was good, but it looks like it cut off some onion and just thrown them in there, or it was leftovers from the salad. I don't know. But I ate it. I found the crackers after I ate my dessert, and I ate them afterwards, but they're still good too. And they had this little old sandwich in it, and it was it was a crooked little old sandwich. It bent around like this. And I said, ma'am, my sandwich is all bent. I don't want it straight. And she says, no. Mr. Shalito, I said, no, 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 Shalito. I said, she said, they're made that way. They're called croissants. I said, cro what? And she says, croissants. They're French. And uh, I said, okay, I'll eat it. I'll eat it. And then they had this dessert, and it was good. It was this cake. I called her and said, what's this stuff in the middle? She says, that's pineapple. I said, it's pineapple. What's pineapple? And she tried to explain it to me. I still don't know to this day what pineapple is. But it, was, it was pretty good after I got to it. But we go on and we fly and we keep hitting these bumpy areas and he's telling us how pretty it is in Dallas. And I said, it's a pretty day to die. But we come on, cross Red River, cross Tennessee, I was thinking about all my kin folks down there. I love them dearly. Think about them every time I fly over Tennessee. Glad they're there and glad I'm in Texas. But uh, we come on down and we come to a stop and everything seemed to work out real well on this trip. I was, I was afraid. I was afraid. I was so afraid. I was afraid of my unborn children. But I tell you to this day, I'll never get on a plane again. I'll take my old wagon and mule.